as I think back to my own sort of early school years and the learning of the Civil War as sort mm -hmm. of almost a rote example of this central sure. event of American history, there's something about my memory of that yeah. that fits very neatly with the idea that in the aftermath immediately of September 11th, well, calling a hi Civil War historian makes a certain kind of sense. Well, and, and, and indeed it does, if for no other reason than very quickly 9-11 was, felt like a huge turning point in history. It also was a mass act of violence, or an act of mass murder, a huge act of violence. And it was a shock to our society. Immediately people were using the language of, we will never be the same again. Uh, never in my lifetime have I experienced something like this. I remember my own mother calling me, who was quite elderly then, and saying exactly that. And I, of course, had to play the historian's son and say, Mom, now we don't know yet, you know, now back up. We don't know exactly what this, we don't even know who did this yet, Mom. No, we'll never be the same again. She, of course, was right. Her instinct was right. And I think when we have such deeply instinctual reactions to historical events, we, we can't help it. Uh, whatever level of knowledge we have of the past, we immediately look back for some kind of hook, some kind of marker some kind of place in the past that will help us understand what's happening to us. After all, without that, uh, we're, we're lost. We're lost in time. We're lost with only the present and the future, which is, is very, very frightening. And hence, at that moment, as you remember better than I, and as everyone remembers, the constant analogies in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, not only to Pearl Harbor, but to Antietam, the bloodiest single day of the Civil War, uh, immediately after 9-11, the numbers of the dead were believed to be higher than they actually turned out. And at one point, uh, they believed there were more than 5,000. And indeed, the Battle of Antietam had uh, about 5,500 dead in one day in September of 1862, the single bloodiest day of warfare that Americans had ever experienced. So immediately, people from journalists to family dining room tables were trying to find their feet to understand what do we compare this to? Well, I don't know if you recall this, but in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, uh, uh, one of the first uh, commemorations, uh, Governor Pataki, then the governor of New York State, yes. actually read the Gettysburg Address. Yes. And again, yes. Uh, on, the, on the surface, it's not immediately clear what that was about. Yeah. But yeah. thinking in light of this conversation in particular, you can see that yeah. there is a need to find a recourse sure. to the solidity of the past. Memory, there is. There is. history, the things we remember, the things we taught. Uh, somehow memory seems very connected to a set of values that the society wants to instill at a given moment. Well, that's a very good example. That was the first anniversary, right? And, and it was sort of put out as a general plea that everyone, uh, the, at the various commemorations, not only at, nine, at the site, read the Gettysburg Address, and on the surface, and I've actually lectured about this one, more than once, wondering why we chose the Gettysburg Address, why in that particular moment, the first anniversary of 9-11, we weren't perhaps prepared yet to allow our politicians or our poets to have at it. Uh, where were our poets uh, with uh, the immediate Gettysburg Address of the first anniversary of 9-11? It, it, it also may simply be that that little speech by Lincoln, of course, is one of those handful of statements we have that say, that's, they say, uh, these are the American values, government of the people, by the people, for the people. It also has that wonderful metaphor of rebirth in it, uh, out of the terrible, uh, in Lincoln's case, the, the terrible character of civil war, an unfinished civil war at that point with the dead all strewn in front of him in the Gettysburg Cemetery. And at 9-11, what did you have? But still, a year after, essentially a, a cemetery on one level and the nation trying to figure out how to think about and commemorate it. So you, you had the rebirth metaphor, too, and already people were trying to imagine how do we have rebirth out of this kind of destruction?